Hey guys, Elpaka77 here, welcome back to another video. As you should hopefully be able to tell, I'm now using my new microphone, but it may take a few videos to find the correct settings. Anyway though, today's video is going to be a look at all of my current squads. Everyone usually likes these videos, so I thought I may as well do another since I've just started uploading again, and I have changed my squads a little bit since the last one of these videos a few months back. So go to my squads here, and the first squad is going to be my Liga Mexico squad. You'll probably see when it eventually loads that it hasn't changed too much to be honest it still stayed 4-2-3-1 I used to have the inform right back I think Aguirre or something like that but I then went and sold him for about a 40k profit I do have the inform goalkeeper Salcedo though and I have changed around a bit and I do have the transferred Michael Le Leatia there other than that though no real changes don't really use the squad this much that much to be honest so I'll move on to the next one now uh, when this eventually loads I'll find out which one the next one is. The next one is Silver Pro League. Again, one of the squads I don't particularly use, but I do keep all of my squads in case there's any new informs. You never know, maybe some decent team of, se team of season silvers from the Pro League. So the I've changed this a bit as well. I think this used to be a, f a wide 4-2-3-1 with Mpoku and Casar Gonzalez as left mid and right mid. But I've now changed to the 4-3-3 with the centre defensive mid and I've got Melanda there. And then with Adida Afo and the other guy here, I've completely forgotten who this is. This is De Quella, who's usually centre forward or striker as centre mid. I may change it up a bit though, I may try him for Mboyo again. I did try him out again, but he was getting price fixed and he's gone up to like 250k or something ridiculous, probably even higher. So I haven't tried him again recently, but defence is really solid on this team. And I do love the wingers of Mpoku and Casella Gonzalez. So we'll move on here to the next squad, and the next squad is my Silver La Liga. You will notice I have changed this squad since the last time you probably saw this. So this squad used to be, I think it used to be 4 and 2 and 2 but it used to be the centre mids rather than left mid and right mid. I did change it again and did have Inform Duda as a centre mid. I think the centre mids I used to have were Salva Sevilla and then one of the informed Spanish centre mids. I've now changed the 4 and 2 and 2 with the left mid and right mid. I've got Inform Murillo instead. And then as the left mid, I think I've, this is Danny Benitez, a really solid player. And then I also have the transfer Jeffren alongside the inform Al Arabi as well with Jesse Rodriguez up front. So on to the next squad and we'll wait for this to load again. It's taking a bit of a while to load. So Silver Serie A, this is, I don't think it's Silver Serie A anymore. I think I have changed it and made it a bit more of a hybrid. So I did base this around some of the Brazilian players in Serie A. Or Serie A. So there's the transferred Ibsen here who plays for Bologna. I thought I'd base it kind of around him, I've, but then it just ended up some half Brazilian team. I did also used to have Marquinho here, so I could make it more Serie A by putting these players in the positions where the Bundesliga players are. And it did make it more of a Serie A team, but I do like this here. I am using M Lapa, not really just because of the pace, he's got really good shooting as well, really nice long shots, but his pace does help. It's a really nice team that I hadn't used the false nine before and it works really, really well. And Kelvin plays extremely well in this in this position and this team. On to the next squad, and the next squad is the Silver the Silver Russian Premier League. I haven't really used this squad at all in probably in ages. I've probably only used this team about three times in the last couple of months, and that was only because of him from Ari. I've now gone back to the normal Ari there because I did have to cash in on my Ari because he was going to drop. I did get him for 175k, I think it was. I managed to sell him on for 460k, but now he's gone back down to 300 or 400. So if I do manage to buy him back in a few weeks for something between 200 and 300, then I will be extremely happy. So anyway, this is the Russian Premier League squad. And I haven't changed it much at all, to be honest. I think I have gone and changed centre defence in mid here and got this Tarasov guy instead of... Let's find and see who it was. I haven't even got him on the bench. He was the... I can't remember what country he was from. But I think it was the Anzi centre defence in mid who I did used to have. Other than that, though, no real changes. Still got Pavlyuchenko up front. I think I did put Kolodin in at centre back. Other than that, no changes there. On to next squad, when this eventually loads. And uh, that is Silver Bundesliga. Again, I have changed this squad as well. This used to be a wide 4 2 3 1. Then I changed to a central 4 2 3 1. And now I've gone back to the 4 1 2 1 2. I didn't particularly like any of the right mids, so I did stay away from 4 1 2 1 2 before. But I have started using Cruz recently, and he has amazing long shots. So he's been a really, really solid player. Also got fairly good dribbling as well. Uh, I've been using Chupa Moting recently for the road to 100 goals. If you've 
probably noticed that Chief Moting did get most of the comments. I think it was very, very close between him, El Arabi and Kim Shin Wook. But I decided to go with Chief Moting, who had did have just about the majority of the votes in, in terms of the player that I choose for my road to 100 goals. And so far, having scored absolutely tons of goals with him, I've recorded some of the gameplay and some of the goals have been absolutely amazing. Also got Beister here up front and other than that though, not really changed too much. I do have Clemens here at left mid as my s is a left wing. Probably still would get full chemistry there because of the German links. But Clemens has been actually fairly fun to use to be honest. He's actually a really solid player, amazing finesse shots, amazing shooting and a lot better passing than s -Fine as well. On to the next team, and we'll find out what team this is in a second. That is my Silver Eredivisie. Now again, this is another one of the teams I've pretty much changed around most of these teams. And this did used to be full Eredivisie, which has got a few Dutch players here as well that aren't in the Eredivisie. I do put, did have a, did put Anita in here, as uh, so there's kind of a lack of decent centre defensive mids in the Eredivisie, so he worked out well there. And they put Butner there as well. As, although I do like Van Aanholt, Butner is probably one of my favourite silver left backs in Ultimate Team, so I did have to try and put him in there. Other than that, though, no real changes. There is. The non-shiny Duarte here as a centre mid, which I have been very, very tempted to change for the upgraded Klaassen or the informed Klaassen. But the informed Klaassen is going for about 100 to about 125k, so it's not really worth it in my opinion. On to the next squad, and we'll find out again what, which one this is. And this is my Silver League of Portugal. Haven't touched this squad much really recently. And the only change I have made is change the formation a bit so I can put the upgraded William Carvalho in. I also have this Diego Salamau guy here who isn't great to be honest. If there was any other left winger I could put in that I probably would as he's really not that great and I really would really would love to put someone else there. But for chemistry reasons I can't but I would like to change this a little bit and find some better players. I'm tempted to buy him for Montero again as he has dropped in price when I did have him before he was 200k and I did manage to sell him on for a profit of about did manage to sell him for 250k so made a 50k profit but now he's gone down to close to sort of about 90 to 120k so he may be worth trying and maybe worth changing formations other than that though i do have the inform miguel vitor here fitted in nicely with the holovast to link to mercado other than that though no real changes kelvin up front and obviously you've got the upgraded william cavallo who i did mention who's an absolutely incredible center defense in mid Move down here to Silver League 1. I'm going to try and do this a little bit faster so it isn't way too long. And this is, I have changed this a little bit again. I've gone for Sacco at left winger because I didn't particularly like Gradle. And I've gone for Riviera at front. I also have the upgraded, I think it's Fabinho for Fabinho, something like that for Monaco. And he's very solid right back. Also have Jussie here. Another one of my favourite centre defensive mids, that is Anne in here. Other than that, no real changes. A few different players on the bench, such as upgraded Trejo, Romerick, who I do occasionally swap in depending on which players I use, and also Modest when I want to make a hybrid. On to the next squad eventually when I get down here. It's going to take a while to get down. Is Silver Barclays Premier League. I haven't really changed as much at all. Over Christmas, though, I did use Kenwin Jones absolutely loads. Got a really nice record on Kenwin Jones, if I can see that here. 75 games played, 113 goals. And for that pace and those work rates, incredibly, incredibly good. Don't really like it anymore, though. I have tried 4-3-2-1 recently with upgraded Jay Rodriguez and Zaha as the left forward and right, right forward. But they were not great at all. Upgraded Jay Rodriguez was really, really bad. Had awful finesse shots. Only has two star skills. And I really didn't like him at all. Luckily, I did make a nice 10k profit on him. So thanks for watching guys, what will now be episode 1 of my squad. I wasn't planning on doing this in two different episodes or two parts, but after recording the, the whole thing, I'm now coming back and doing this audio, doing this commentary after recording the whole thing. The whole thing ended up being about 18 minutes long and that is a little too long. So this episode is going to end up about 10 minutes or so and the next episode is going to end up about 7 or 8 minutes, which are much better times so people don't get completely bored listening to me talk about my squad. So there we go, thanks for watching guys, cheers.